Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to another DIY video. Today, we're gonna try to recreate the Hagi denim from the brand Hysteric Glamour. Now, if you don't know how they look like, boom, there they are. If you guys watched my prepping video, you would know that my main goal for making these is making sure that each individual panel are symmetrical with each other. Now, if they end up not being that symmetrical, if they're a little off, totally fine. But you know, it'd be nice if they came out perfect. But knowing me, it probably won't be that perfect. <laughs> now the jeans I decide to use for this DIY will be the George jeans from Walmart. I'm gonna use these jeans for a number of reasons. One is because, you know, I have them in hand already. And two, for a past video, I added a flare panel on the bottom of these. These have the fit I want the end results to be because it has like a regular fit in the thigh and then it flares out to the bottom. And the length of this is perfect. So when I make the pattern, I'm going to be basing it off of this pant leg the one with the flare panel. So again, I decided to use these George jeans mainly because one of the pant panels had a flare panel already and was basically the fit I wanted the final pants to have, making these the perfect choice to be used as the guideline for when I make the pattern. To make the pattern, I got this roll of paper I got from Amazon that has a perfect width size to be able to leave space for the seam allowance. I lay the pants as flat as I could showing the front left panel so that I can draw an outline around it to create the first pattern. But when I started drawing the outline, I felt I wasn't making an accurate pattern Pattern since the pant panel seams weren't completely flat. Because of this, I decided to just deconstruct the pants to separate each pant panel. First off, I removed the stitchings holding the hem down, then the belt loops, and then the metal button at the waistband. Looking back, I probably could have left the button on, but you know, it is what it is. Afterwards, I started taking apart the seams so that I'll be able to separate each part of the pants, starting with the waistband. Once that was removed, I started working on the side seams, and then finally, the inseams. With the panels removed, I ironed the original seam creases to make each panel flat and easier to work with. Then I placed them on the paper to draw the pattern. At this point, if you want to make any changes to how you want the fit of your pants to be, this is the time to do it while using the flat panel as a guideline. Since I removed the panel, that also meant that I removed the flare that I added. Now to get it back, I drew in an extension to the bottom of the pant legs that would be the flare, and then cut out each outline, leaving me with four total patterns. Now to figure out the measurements of each individual panel, which is, you know, the main design of the pants. I wanted the top panel to be a bit bigger than the rest, so I decided to make it three and a half inches. Now to figure out the size of the rest of the panels, I first subtracted the length of the very top panel from the total length of the pant panel, which was 44 inches. That would leave me with 40 and a half inches. Now since I made 18 panels for that pant leg, I divided it by 18 to get two and a quarter inches, or 2.25 inches, which would be the length of each individual panel. I then placed some measuring tape across the length of the pattern and made markings for the seams every 2.25 inches, or two and a quarter inches. You know what I mean? Once all the markings were made, I drew in horizontal lines, which would be the seams. Because I'm gonna cut these out to keep everything in order and to not get confused, I labeled each panel which pan leg it belongs to, the number it is starting from one, and an arrow to keep me from accidentally sewing it upside down. Then with my rotary cutter, I cut along the seam lines to create smaller individual patterns for the next step. In total, there were 70 individual pattern panels and they were separated into four groups, FR, FL, VR, and BL. Before working with these cutout panels, I realized since I'm keeping the butt pocket area intact, the top back panels could be done simply by just flipping them over and then switching them from left to right and right to left because they're both the same size since they're from the same denim pants. So that's what I did. I undid the seam, switched the panels around, and refolded and stitched it back like nothing happened. Again, I wanted to keep the butt area intact, but I decided that the cutoff would be about one inch down from the tip of the butt pocket to give space for the seam allowance so I can attach it to the other panels. Now to cut out denim fabrics using the pattern cutouts I made. Because I added an extension to the pattern of the pants, I had to use extra denim fabric to make up for the lack of denim material from the base layer pants. But what was important in this step was making sure to leave about a quarter to half an inch of seam allowance from the bottom as well as from the top of the pattern cutout. Because of the extra denim needed, I ended up using up the entire base layer denim plus another whole pair and half of a pair of pants to make up for it. Like I said before, labeling each panel was extremely helpful, so on the inside of each panel, I labeled and marked each specific piece to avoid confusion. If you're 100% certain that you mark the seam allowance evenly, you can probably skip this next step, 
but now we're going to create the seam creases for each panel. This was simply done by folding it with one hand and then ironing it with the other, while the folding hand acts like a guide to make sure you're ironing on the line marking you made. I'd recommend wearing a glove on your guiding hand to prevent burning your fingertips from the steam of the iron. Once the panel was done being ironed, I repinned them to their respective label. Now we can finally start the sewing process. To put them together, make sure that the right side of both panels are facing each other and then line them up at the seam crease. I used pins to hold both panels in place while I sewed them together, making sure I added a back stitch at the start and the end of each seam to make sure the seam will be secure. Once all the panels are sewn in, you can see that the right side face of the pant panel looks like the Michelin Man. Now to fix this, flip the panel over and iron down the seams of each panel to flatten out the right side. From here on the back panel, we can sew the butt pocket section that was cut out earlier to the newly ironed seam crease to complete the panel. For the front pockets, I decided to reuse some extra butt pockets I had lying around to be used as the donors to make these shaped pockets. I measured each pocket to be 5x5 five five inches and then added in the curve at the bottom of them to get the shape like in the reference picture. When the pocket was done, I pinned them in place on the front panels and then sewed them in. Now finally, after all that work, we have four completed panels to form the pants. I sewed in the corresponding front and back panels together first at their side seams and then ironed them down on the inside to flatten out the right side of the panel. Afterwards, I did the same thing but this time with the inseam of each pair and then ironed them down. To put the pants together at the crotch area, I turned one pair inside out and then stuffed the other pair into the pair that wasn't inside out into the pair that was inside out in order to line up the crotch seams. I pinned them together and then sewed them down. But when I got to the front part of the crotch seam, I left some space to put back the placket and zipper fly. Now for the placket and the zipper fly. This was ridiculously confusing to me. Maybe I put the pants back in the wrong order or something, but after a bunch of review looking at extra denim with their zipper fly intact and whatnot, I was able to reinstall the plaggets and the zipper. <sighs> Afterwards, I sewed the waistband back onto the pants and then replaced the metal button with the spare button from a flannel I had by hand sewing it in. And then I finished off the top of the pants by adding back the belt loops. The last thing to do was to finish it off by folding and sewing in the hem at the bottom of both pant legs. Now the reason why I chose to do this DIY is because I thought it was going to be chill where I can just like mindlessly work on this laid back and then I'll just get it done. But no, it was really tedious. You know, a lot of patterns, a lot of drawings, a lot of cutting, a lot of sewing, but honestly it was pretty fun because it was like a crash course on how to work with patterns. So I did learn a lot from it, even though it wasn't really going as I expected it to. But for the pants, I would definitely give it like a nine out of 10. I would have given it a 10 out of 10, but you know, the seams, they don't line up on the front and the back panels. And that's because I was getting a little bit impatient when I was cutting out each panel and marking and sewing the seam allowance. So it's kind of, you know, my fault that they're not perfect like that, but I still like how they turned out in the end. But I mean, the back side, pretty much symmetrical. Really proud of this part right here. And then the front side, the different color front panel. Honestly, I like this kind of gives it a little accent. And then for the fit of these, I thought they were going to be a little bit more, you know, fitted in the thigh area. Then on the bottom of the flare, it actually opens up to 11 inches when I prefer it to be 10. And that's because I wasn't really working with the seam allowance correctly. But of course, I'd rather them be baggy than too small. And the most complicated part of this DIY wasn't actually making these panels and sewing it together. It was actually putting the zipper fly back in. Cause you know, it's like attached to these panels right here like here and then here and then how it's like sewed in right there and here and then that took a long freaking time but what you guys think do you guys like how the pants turned out do you guys prefer it to be a little more skinny like how the original ones were or do you like how they fit right now if you want to keep up to date with what i'm working on follow me on my instagram at julius nathan i usually post updates on my story the next pants i'm trying to make is either going to be from capital or who decides war 
maybe from those two. I'm kind of in the mood to like hand sew panels and stuff like that. I'm um, kind of like the, the rat flare denims I have there. Then who decides war because, you know, honestly, a lot of people want to see that. And I haven't done a DIY of that brand in a minute, so maybe it's about that time. But again, if you guys like this video, drop a like, hit that sub button too. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.